It's time once again for another edition of Talk To Me. And now, here's Emmy himself, eight-time Emmy Award-winning journalist, Maynard Eaton. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Talk To Me. I'm your host, Maynard Eaton, and joining us today is an esteemed legal scholar. Her name is Justice Leah Ward Sears. Some say who should be on the Supreme Court. Does a serious welcome to talk to me. Oh, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Manny. Thank you. Judge Sears, in this week's edition of the Atlanta Enquirer, our friend Hal Lamar says, why isn't Judge Ward Sears on a short list to be on the U.S. Supreme Court? What's your answer to that? Many people are wondering, why not you? Okay, I, well, first off, it's a, it's a, Okay, you know the phrase, to everything there is a season. And I was on the short list under Barack Obama for twice. Um, and I'm at this point, I'm 66 years old now. And the if you'll notice that the people that are being appointed for these lifetime <laughs> jobs, Maynard, are in their 40s or, or early 50s. And I thought, uh, I loved uh, RBG. Ruth Bader Ginsburg loved her to death, but I thought she just stayed too long. So there is a time for everything in life. And I think the time is probably past for me. I mean, I'm on that weird cusp because I know that the last, uh, Merrick Garland was 66 when Obama appointed him. And of course, he sat that around and nothing really happened. I, but I'm on the way, you know, far end of the cusp. I'd have to live a 20 years on that court to, you know, do what I needed to do. And uh, that's, he, he could get some 40, 50 year olds at this point. And I'm not offended. Po it's politics, not at all. I was gonna ask you, would you want the job? Would you want to be on a short list? Would you want to be the nominee for the US I'm Supreme not, Court? I mean, unlike when I was younger and I was hungry for it, at this point, I'm not. I. Uh, this is how I just kind of view life in, in general. If I were, if it was my mission, if I, I, if the president came to me and said, look, we need you, you please do it, I would, because I've always sort of had a mission-driven life, and if I was, you know, I wasn't hungry to get on the Georgia Supreme Court, but Zell Miller called me up. I thought I was just applying, 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 and at some point, maybe I would get it, not at 36 years old. Sal Miller <laughs> called me up and he said, you know, we need you. The Brooks suit is pending. You're a black woman. We need you. And I was like, okay, you know, this is the job. It's a job. I'm going to go do the job. I thought God wanted me, to, you know, but I didn't think that, you know, it was going to be forever and ever and ever. And it wasn't for me. So, uh, 17 years was enough on that job. And President Biden promised during his uh, campaign to name a Black woman to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, do we need a Black woman? How significant is that promise and how tough will it be to pull it off? I think it uh, is a significant promise. I'd like to see a Black woman, an African-American woman, an African-American woman on the court. Oh, uh, I think he can pull it off. It just, it always depends on who it is. You know, it's always a matter of who it is. We are not one homogeneous group of people, you know, that all thinks the same way. So the fact that somebody just has a, a black skin color doesn't, uh -huh. as you know, you know, doesn't necessarily mean that they're a progressive as I am and are going to, you know, push a progressive agenda. So I think it is significant. I hope that they appoint a progressive number one, and I'd like to see a pro 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 progressive woman with black skin. Uh, not just any black woman, though. Who do you like, uh, Justice Sears? Who do you like? Uh, is Katanji Brown Jackson? Is, is Judge good? Michelle Childs? Is Judge Eleanor Kagan? And I think, I, I hope I'm saying the names correctly. Who I would be your choice? They were, they are all very good for, you know, many different reasons. And some of them, they're, they're going to go 
through, if they go through the process I went through before some he heavy, heavy, heavy be be bedding. I mean, it is intense yeah. bedding. They, you know, you know, who are your children talking to on Facebook and all your <laughs> medical stuff and all your tax stuff and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, on the surface, they look good. But you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of digging that has to be done on your finances and what you've said. I had this, I personally had to say every speech I'd ever made up wow. to the White House. Every, I had to find it. It cost Haskell and I, my husband, who was walking around, you know, he's a little much more uh, uh, per, you know, he's uh, more private than I. Boxes of them, taxes, every speech. <laughs> I had ever made, and we had to, it cost us like $25,000 to put, get the accountants together and all these people working on it to just get it up. And then, this is sort of a funny thing, when they, Obama left, I got Sotomayor stuff back. I have it in my storage. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe she got my stuff. I don't know. So, apply for the job is, in fact, a job, huh? Yes, I mean it is an you know you're it is an intense job, you know, and, and I understand it particularly when I I was with Obama and you know whenever you're a black applying for the job or you're the African American hiring you got to make sure this person's stuff is all good you know you know that so <laughs> yes you know, yeah you. so I mean they looked at everything. So, you know, I think by this, the time the second rolled around, uh, they knew what the deal was, at least with me. And, and the other, I think it was eight of us at that time, eight or nine of us. Just a serious, um, you talked about having a African-American, a progressive African-American jurist. Will that get through the Senate confirmation hearing? Is that, is that a concern? Will someone of your ilk? actually get approved you think i think so you know i think so i mean it can't be someone that's going to burn the house down <laughs> the Supreme court you know but yes i believe you can have uh someone who leans to the left who's you know uh you know an inside person who leans to the left like thurgood marshall was one of the inside guys he you know, we're, we, we work it in many different ways, and all that's good. He was an inside guy. Most lawyers are, you uh, know, a conservative lawyer. Uh, well, conservative lawyering in that he used that process to get a lot of stuff done that needed to be done. I mean, that, that lead, I, I admire him and the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and all those people a lot. But I also admire the people in the street, the people in the marches. We need everybody to do. I, I think it can be done, particularly with the Senate composed as it is. Now we are, we got to make sure it's, it's, yes, I know. We got to make sure that it stays the way it is. And that means uh, now that I'm making a little money practicing law, making the donations that need to be. Now, you know politics all your life, particularly the position you've been in. How politically significant, how politically tough is this going to be? I mean, this is a political move, isn't it right? And again, yeah. at the heart of it is a Black woman who's, sit, who's looking for your kind of uh, position and clout. Right. It's a, it's, look, it's a political appointment. Yeah. You know, you remember, I, I chair the uh, Senate, the, the state Senate, Commission on lower uh, district court judges, marshals, and and uh, what is marshal and U.S. attorneys. Okay, and you know, we go through the names, we find the my, you know best people, and, and there are very good people who are left off for any a number of political reasons. You know, it's just you don't know, and then you send it up to the senators, also up in Wardock, and they have their own political agendas or they're just thoughts and then it goes to the president and he has his own thoughts and they've all gotten through so far and they're all uh 
very different kind of judges that, that, than you would have found under uh, the last administration. But, you know, able, very, very capable people, but, but different, they have different, obviously different judicial philosophies. We Just a serious, as you well know, uh, there are critics of the president's pledge to select a black woman. Uh, they call it discrimination. Uh, and mostly those critics are white males. Your thoughts on that? Uh, there's always, uh, you know, I guess, I think 83% uh, of the federal judiciary or more are white men. Yeah. You know, so come on, <laughs> Re really, come on. It's, it's not discrimination. It is, uh, you know, trying to rebalance the courts in a way that they are way out of balance. And, you know, given the appointments that uh, President Trump made, the court is uh, not only just white men, but it's shifted far right. Yeah. Not, I'm, talk, I'm not just talking about the Supreme Court. I'm talking about federal courts in general. So, I mean, our state courts are like that in some ways. So you, there is a need in this country for balance. There's always a need for balance. You know, uh, right is okay. I mean, although I'm not, you know, that far, but left is fine, although I'm not that far left, but there's, most Americans are moderates and there is always a need for balance. And I, th I think that's why Biden's in office right now. It was a need for balance and the courts definitely need to be balanced. And they're not right. Will uh, uh, participants, uh, candidates, the president even call you for advice about the kind of person? Will you be consulted? Will you be sought after to say, here's what we need? What, what do you say? I mean, will they look at, to you I, as an example of what the, the court should be? I could be. Oh, uh, you know, I have been in on lower courts much to my surprise, you know, and I'm happy to give, I'm happy to, but it's just my advice. But the, the beauty is he's got plenty of people to advise him. Well, I'm happy to do it if, if he were to call, you know, I'm, I'm a servant leader. I'm a servant leader. I'm happy to, to uh, uh, kick in, do my share. I don't need to be the person on top. I'm really happy to do, be, to, to lead from the rear. Very happy to do that. It's actually comforting sometimes. Well, like I said in Hal Lamar's article, to me, having been around Atlanta 40 plus years, you're the quintessential black female attorney, jurist. And uh, I tell you, male or female, you're certainly a legal scholar. Many salute, me being one of many. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Judge Sears. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Talk to Me with I, America's number one black jurist to me, <laughs> Judge Thank Leah you. Ward Sears. See you next time. All right.